What's up, what's up, what's up, and welcome to the Drinking Talk Podcast. This is a brand new podcast on 88.9 The Mix, and today we have none other than the legendary coach, Bo Henson from EC Glass. Coach, what's going on, buddy? Not much, not much. Uh, just trying to avoid the COVID and, and stay busy. Understandable, understandable. Coach, so... Man, it's an honor to have you in here, Coach, and you meant so much to so many people, Coach, and we just want to sit here and, and just pick your brain, talk to you. If you got any stories you want to tell, anything you want to talk about, Coach, just talk about it. But I'm going to start off by saying you're talk, we're here with one of the top coaches ever in Virginia and the nation. We're talking about Coach Bo Henson, eight Western District titles, six Northwest Region titles, Three time triple A, uh, three times triple A state runner up, 88 coach of the year, one national championship, Hall of Famer from Lynchburg um, Sports, Perry McClure, Firm College, and also he is the EC Glass Hall of Famer coach. And George Washington University. And George Washington University. Yes, yes, yes. So, coach, man, I, we, I mean, this is a, again, an honor to have you in here. So, coach, just talk to us a little bit about. Glass in general, Coach. Andre, you want me to start now or you want me to go back 25 years? I want you to go back 25. We, we got an hour for this show, Coach, and let's talk about some of the things. Whatever makes you happy, Coach. Well, I think the most most important thing is, is being associated with hundreds of young men just like you. And when everybody asks me, do all my friends, and I go to glass games, and women and men ask me, what do you miss? Do you miss football? I miss football, but the most important thing is I just miss the camaraderie with with my players. I just love the coaches and I love my players. And uh, actually, I miss teaching because I taught social studies. I didn't want to teach PE, and and I got you know I interacted with with the girls and everybody else as far as student body. So I just I miss the youth. That's what I miss. Well, there, yeah, Coach, I'm going to tell you, even you said, you know, the girls in the class, everybody loved Coach Henson. Everybody loved, wanted to be in Coach Henson's class. I had Coach Henson's class. I had Coach Henson for my senior year. I had the sweetest setup ever. I had lunch, Coach Henson um, for uh, history. Then I had two periods of, um, what was I forgot what it was called, but uh, well, I didn't have to do nothing. I was Coach Henson's assistant, so I was loving it. So, <laughs> you, were, you, were foot, you were a football gopher. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coach, but, you know, when you talk to people about, you know, Lynchburg sports and especially EC Glass and Virginia high school sports, it's two names that always come up, Coach Bo Henson, and Coach uh, Mike Smith from down in Hampton. Talk to us a little bit about your relationship with Coach Mike Smith, Coach. Oh, Lord, Andre, it goes back to 72 when when Johnny, when Coach Palmer came here. That's when Mike took over. He was, he was Johnny's assistant at Hampton. He took over there. So most, you know, we've got, when we go down on the coast to, to, to scout in the playoffs, we would stay at Mike's house and he, uh, it put us up for the night because we didn't want to drive back that night. But anyway, I've known Mike for since 1972, and you know, with his some people, you know, just <laughs> they don't like Mike Smith because of his attitude. He's cocky, no doubt about it. But I've had a great relationship with him as far as the, especially with the All Star Game during, and you played in the All Star Game yes, during sir. the summer. We worked together. I coached in a bunch of the games, and then I, of course, when they were here, I was uh, helped coordinate the games. But no, my relationship with Mike is fine. It's it, and uh, I've had a good relationship with all the coaches from Northern Virginia to to the East Coast to 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 Southern Virginia. So, uh, but he's a great coach, and right now, you know, he's the winningest coach in, in the state of Virginia. I might be the winningest coach in the country because he's, he's had such good records and uh, he's been head coach for so long. I, I think Mike's 82 right now. He's about three years older than I am and, and he's still coaching. Uh, uh, that's, 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 that's big. And while we're on coaches, like coach, everywhere you go, you're respected. 
Anytime, yo, well, I went to EC Glass. Oh, you, uh, you, did you play for Coach Henson? Oh, yeah, we played for Coach Henson. Oh, he's a great man. That's all you get. Never, ever, ever heard anyone, anyone ever say a bad word or a bad thing about Coach. Um, now, with that being said, talk to us about some of your coaching rivals. Um, you know, who was your biggest coaching rival? I know Ed Martin may have been one down at GW, um, Larry Smith down at Halifax. But who did you enjoy coaching against the most? <laughs> oh gosh, uh, Joel Hicks. I, you know, I, Joel and I were the best friends in, in the U.S. and I, I'd rub him as much as I could. Uh, of course, Alger Pugh before Alger died, and Daniel. Alger was a heck of a good coach and uh, won a state championship, and he was tough to beat. But, but uh, Willis White. Oh Lord, yeah, it was in Salem, Willis. You know, he was. He was pretty straightforward, but now Hicks and I, we were in, we coached several all-star games in here and also down at Hampton, so we weren't quite as quiet as Willis. But anyway, I think probably Eddie and, and uh, Joel Hicks were the two coaches that I, that I enjoyed the most coaching against and enjoyed beating as well. Okay, hey, well, Coach, I'm going to tell you, with this 151 wins, 68 losses, and five ties, I think you got the best of a lot of coaches out there. But uh, So, Coach, who was the coach that you tried your damnedest to beat, but you really couldn't beat him? Now, I know that's a far-fetched question because you didn't beat everybody, but who was that one that you was just like, ah? Mike Smith. I, but, you know, I didn't coach against Mike but one time, and, and that was an all-star. I mean, that was a state championship. Yeah, but yeah. now we we scrimmage every year for probably – did we scrimmage Hampton, York? No, no, no. No, no. no we scrimmaged Hampton before you got there. We scrimmaged Hampton at, at UVA, and uh, we, we, had some, we had some great scrimmages. But, well, and Willis. Willis White was tough to beat, but uh, – I, I know I got the edge on Willis when he was at PH and, and Salem, but, uh, you know, you don't look at that. You look at, at their, your friends. I, I laughed at Eddie Martin. <laughs> he, said, he told me, he said, first time, the, we went down there his first year as head coach. He said, I didn't realize everybody, and Dan will hated you and hated Glass as much as they do. I said, yeah, I know, Eddie. He said, it's a great rivalry. I said, yeah, I know. And I'd fool around the editing. He cussed me and anything else. I said, do you mind if, if I take my kids up on the top of that hill that where you come down and, and roll the helmets down? I said, that's the only thing I got to do is roll the helmets down. I said, you're beat. I said, we don't whip you. Well, he cussed me and walked away. <laughs> Joel Hicks was the same way. But, I, you know, it's just, it's tough to say, but but it's it's always, I wanted to be, Friends after the game. I wanted to shake hands and what win, lose, or draw, and then I wanted to be able to see them when I did and and, and, and be sociable and everything else. So um, Willis, Joel, and Eddie, they were, they, you know, they were all tough plus Mike. Okay. Now, toughest games. Now, like I know with Heritage, you only lost to Heritage two times in, in 18 years. 21 years, you only lost two times to Heritage. And, um, you know, like I said, you got a winning record against the majority of all the coaches in the state that you ever faced. So, with that being said, let's talk about some of your most memorable games. Games that stick out to you the most. The, don't, it doesn't matter if it was the early days or the latter stages in your career. When you go back, the biggest game was, was uh, of course, state championship beating uh, Huguenot, but the date of the regional championship against Fleming, you know, we, we won it by one point and we had to put up two uh, goal line, uh, goal line uh, defenses. So that was a big game in order to get to state championship. Your senior year, which game was that? Lee Davis. Lee Davis were spanky. <laughs> through the ball, you know, through the touchdown pass to you, and you you looked like Spider Man going up. The air. No, no, coach, that was uh, that was uh, Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Jackson. Yeah, that was that. 
yep, yep, yep. And then, yeah, we won that game. And then my senior, that was my sophomore year. My senior year is when we was we were down with a minute and I think 16 seconds to go. And we went, I was throwing the ball to Spanky the whole way and then oh, caught man. Steve on the backside post to, uh, to go up. And then we missed the field goal. I had to go on the OT. <laughs> but now those games like that and then uh, probably the earliest game was, was with Cecil Jackson. Of course, he was all, one of our All-Americans and uh, Greg Brooks and that bunch against Heritage. We were down and Cecil looked at me and said, uh, we're going to win. I'm going to get the ball. I said, okay. We were down by six points and uh, God, God bless him. I said, he hit somebody and knocked knocked helmets and through the through the stands and hit the ball in somewhere and I looked and he had the ball and and we were on the two yard line we scored we win the ball game and, and we were down and I don't think it was about fifty seconds left but it's it's a lot of ball games uh, Garfield where we came back in Northern Virginia and uh, they were all big time yeah no doubt and and that's what you got like I was we we, we talk about all the time about. When you was at Glass Coach, uh, there was always we were always ta- we were always taken care of, always well taken care of. I mean, in the late eighties, early nineties, we was, we had charter buses. We weren't riding school buses. We had charter buses. You know, after the games, you know, we had meals waiting for us. Um, you know, we had the coats on the sideline when it was cold. We had new cleats. We had practice cleats. We had new uni- – I mean, we had everything. I mean, the latest helmets, the latest equipment. I mean, we were trained and we were tra- treated like college players. And, you know, that's that's something that today that, you know, it's kind of like, dang, man, I look back on that and be like, dang, coach prepared me for that. And two things that I always was said that you prepared me for, coach. You always – Three things. You always told me, like, you got to stay the same, be the good person that you are. You always told me that. You always um, made sure that we was all taken care of, whether it was the first starting quarterback, which was me, or the very last player on the team. We all had that treatment. Like, And Jesse Calloway was talking to me last night, and he was like, Coach always treated everybody the same. He said, now, game day – you gonna have brand new cleats now. He said your practice, you might have some of them leaning ponies or some of them pumas or them. Oh, he said, but he always had us clean. And coach, what was your philosophy behind that? Because, like I said, two, three things I, I I learned was always to be a good person. And you showed me, like once once I got to tech, the things that we were doing in high school, that's what we were doing at tech. And and you know that that prepared me for that. And another thing you always told me was. Always be ready to play. I remember you telling me that as a freshman, and my dad actually telling me that. You threw me in the game, I wasn't ready. My senior year, I just felt like it was nobody that can beat us. And, you know, I was just like, man, we're going to win this game. I really wasn't concentrating like I needed to. But when I got to Tech and played in the national championship game, that was the first thing that I thought about the night before the game. Coach Henson said, always be ready. Your dad said, always be ready. And I was ready that game, so I definitely give you uh, all your flowers while you're here for everything that you've done for me, Coach. But getting back to the glass uh, team, let's talk about your coaching staff. Well, I'm, you know, I never, never, never said anything. Try, try to promote myself. I've always put the coaches, assistant coaches first because, let me tell you, uh, if you don't have a, if you don't have some great assistants who are willing to work as hard as you are and sharp, then your program will dead before you before you can get out the water. But you know, one of one of my best friends and the longest co- the longest person I've been coaching with is, is Otis Tucker. And and Lord knows what the 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 association that we had, the friendships we had, and, and his knowledge of ball, of, of the game. Uh, Dennis Peters, who passed away about a year and a half ago. God bless him. Yeah, bless you him. cannot have a more faithful person than Dennis. And uh, the coaches that you work with, I, I, assume, I, I say they're the best coaches, that, yeah. it's best staff with Glenn Jenkins. Dickie Birds was with me yeah. a long time. 
and and Ed, uh, Ed and Bobby Johnson. Yeah. Uh, Mike and Berry, that was Mike Berry, who <laughs> passed away a few yeah. years ago. I mean, Mike Berry would take he would take films home on Saturday. Yeah. I told the coaches and the wives loved me because I said I'm not doing anything on Saturday. You're not doing anything on Saturday. Stay away. Yeah. And we'd come to work on Monday on Sunday morning and. and Mike would take the films home. He'd have everything uh, broken down yeah. when we got on uh, when we got there at eight o'clock in the morning. But uh, you can't, you can No one. You were there with Frank at Tech, and uh, Frank was a great person. Yeah. But he had some great coaches too. Great coaches. Good. Great coaches out there. And. Uh, who and was, he had him put in the right position, in the right who place. Was a, who was the coach? You. Ricky Boston. Ricky. Yeah. I think the day Ricky left Tech, the offense sort of no was doubt. suffered from there yeah. up until Frank. Yeah. I think Frank would have won several more games if Ricky had stayed with him as far as the offense. You're because right. he, he, everything else fell into place for Frank. And I, it was just like when I left uh, two years old, a year later, Bobby went to Bobby went to to. Brookville, he takes and Dickie and Glenn go to Brookville. They win state championship. Yeah. So yeah. these, this is what this is what you got to have, and and we're still, we're still great friends today. I, I golf with Dickie and, and Glenn and Bobby and Ed. Everybody asks me, well, hell, they two years, they twenty years younger than you. Well, I said, well, <laughs> most of my friends are dead on on the Walker. They, they yeah, 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 yeah. So we're still great friends, and we still, I mean, Glenn Jenkins still talks, but he said yeah. he said it was 10 of the best years of my life, so. Yeah. And you guys made it. We couldn't have won without the talent. And you talk about the equipment and everything and grab, but uh, Roger Johnson and Reed Ebert cornered me a couple of weeks ago and said, we want to ask you. And Charlie White, mm -hmm. we're... How did you get the money to outfit us like you did? Yeah. And everything else. Yeah. He said, Grass went to Marshall. Charlie went to, to Wavy Murray, mm -hmm. where Deshaun is, and, and Reed Ebert. They said, We had better equipment at Glass we have it at the college. Yeah. So you didn't. You had I, yeah, I had some good. Yeah. But, you know, I had I didn't have to go out to money. People, I had friends, I'd ask them for money. I, I'd say, Hey, I need a little bit more. One of the guys, Tommy Witt, he'd start me out ten thousand mm. dollars. He see Glass Bowl Henson Fund, and he said, "When you get rid of this, I got more." Wow. And other people did too. So, but we were winning, yeah. and they loved. To nobody's coming out on Friday night to see a loser, and, and nobody's coming out. Nobody really worries about getting their money's worth. They want a W. Yep, that's it. So this is this is what we had going for us, and this is what I'm very proud of. Yeah, Coach, and. You coined a, a saying, like far as I mean, I remember hearing it like <laughs> looking on other videos from like when I was in middle elementary school. We do not rebuild, we reload, and we live by that. I mean, and, and you can tell through your tenure that's exactly what we was doing, Coach. I don't think you ever had a losing season. No, we never had. I mean, you know, I, I think. The, the the one one year that we we had we lost like we was two and four going into actual district play we scrapped the wishbone we went back to that and then it was just back to business as normal from there so coach we talked about some of your uh yeah the coaches and we talked about some of your um nemesis that, um that you coached against Let's talk about the players, some of the characters. Talk about some of the characters that you had over the years. And I know you had a wild bunch, Coach. <laughs> a wild bunch. Well, let's, let's put it this way. <laughs> they were wild to a, cent, to, to a degree, but very, very good character, great character. And, and most of them respected me, they respected the, the the rules and regulations put forth at Glass. Yeah, they worked. You guys and the guys before you, I had a few that fell off the cliff, but not many. Yeah. most most of most of the EC Glass graduates and boy guys that the young men that played football that have gone on to be great fathers, citizens, and everything else. But. Uh, I've had kids that just, 
One is 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 C. Dahl Jackson. I, I, he was he was a character. <laughs> but we always you remember we had blue and white scrimmage. Yep. Kim Dean was one of my running backs. Uh, he was five of the guy eight of the Dean boys that played for me and Cecil. I always lined. We split the teams up. Well, towards the end of the scrimmage, Kim took a pitch and it was running just you know a, a uh, sweep. Well, I hear a jet go by me. And I said, God no money. Sea Dog hit Kim and knocked him across the track. He <laughs> cleared the bench. And I'm saying, what in the world are you? Well, he got the wrong, he got the wrong color on us. <laughs> we had to put him in the hospital. <laughs> wow. We they were talking the other night. We lost the first two games, probably because Kim wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. And then we won eight straight, probably at the end of the season. We were the best team in Virginia. Yeah. By far. And we didn't even make the playoffs because they didn't have wild cards or anything like they yeah. do now. Yeah. But uh, Chris Matthews with you, you mm -hmm. know. Some of them needed a, a kick in their rear end. Some of them needed a kiss. Yes, indeed. And Chris was one that would get down and just like the state championship. Uh, fumbled one time, I think. Well, I had, you know, you got Chris was down, and, but but guys like and Todd and Mama Lori, uh -huh. you, uh, y'all just believe in yourself, and this is you know this is what it's all about. You're talking about buses. No, nope, it wasn't going to be any. Yellow buses, you guys, but they trailways. Yeah. And I like I told them to everybody, we we traveled, we stayed in Holiday Inn. Yes, we did. But the seniors told the sophomores, you're going to be back. If you screw up, he's going to put us on a bus at 5 o'clock in the morning. We're going to Chesapeake and we're going to North Virginia. He's yeah. not going to put us in the Holiday Inn. Yep. So, Holiday Inns, you know, the buses, this is what the kids talk about in uh, character. I, I just. I thought we had some of the best kids in the world. Now we had we had some people didn't want to practice, and we had to straighten them out in the first couple of times. But uh, y'all would bring them around, and and uh, <laughs> it just like BB Shavers. People we were playing the All Star game this year, and I was the head coach. We were standing at Pittsburgh College, and Keith Hamilton was on the team, and boy from uh, Annandale, they they missed curfew. Well, Keith and them sneaked out. The boy kept his head, made two sets of keys for his car, and they were, <laughs> Keith, Keith had him out of town. And I sat on the, sat on the front porch in a rocking chair over at the LC and the door. And Davey Tom said, He's going to bust your ass tomorrow. <laughs> Keith said, He will touch me. And I said, Okay. So, you know, when I put you guys up and we did the whistles, stops oh. and all, and Keith and whatever his name was, we did it. No doubt. And Hamilton told me, he said, I've never been disciplined like that before in all my life. So, you know, we had the discipline and we had to hug and we had to kiss. No doubt. And you and you were good at that, Coach. Like, one thing that I always say to, and when people ask, uh, my dad has always been in my life. Always. Never been out of my life. But, like I said, I know he felt comfortable sending me to school with you because you taught us more than just football, Coach. I mean, you were talking in football terms. But at the end of the day, when you sit back and you, and you listen to it and you, you kind of recap the things that you say, I'm like, Dad, Coach Henson said that 25 years ago. And you just sit there and you kind of like, man, this guy was more than a football coach. This guy was beloved by everybody. Um, like I said, I don't think, I don't know no player. Matter of fact, there's no player that I've ever said anything that to about you that ever said like, you know, nah, I didn't want to play for Coach Everybody wanted to play for you. Everybody wanted to transfer in and play for you. So, you know, being like beloved as much as you are, Coach, what, I, I, better question, what are some of the things that you would remember that wasn't football related that you felt like, yeah, I think I really touched that person's life? Well, uh, you know, I, after graduation, some of my players' uh, moms have died. Some play, I, I, I go to the funeral. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to your wedding. I uh, went yes, to Cecil Jackson's wedding. I went to Greg Brooks's wedding. I, I try to, I try to stay 
and be a part of you or your family or whatever. Yes, you do. Uh, I didn't realize, you know, that, that your mother had died. I, she was one of the sweetest ladies I've ever met. Oh, she I, loved she, us some Bo Henson, I tell you that. She, she definitely on, loved me. She <laughs> put me on the spot, but for three years ago, who's better? Nation of art. That's what she asked me. And your dad, your dad looked at me. Of course, I've known your dad forever. I said, uh, I'm good. Now, are you sure? I said, yes, man. Said, you hear that, Dre Shaw? You hear that, Dre Shaw? The reason we did, you know, I, I'm going to pick you, I'm going to pick up. We played better teams. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, when you go to Pulaski, when you go to Garfield, when you you go to Annandale, uh, Hampton, yeah. we were playing, we played teams that could beat some small colleges. No doubt. And I just think the competition and, and the Players' guts right now are much better 20 years ago than what they are. I mean, I'm not saying anything. We got great athletes. Yeah. But I just think competition, week in and week out, we didn't have any. We didn't have no any chances. We had to be ready to play every week. Yes, we did. And uh, that's not, you know, that's not the case now. But uh, well, yeah, I'll probably get in trouble somebody. But, oh, you ain't coach. It, but the competition was we. But it's true. We were better. It's true because you got to think about this, coach. Back when we were coaching. It was single A Division One and Two, yep. Double A Division Three and Four. Then it was Triple A Five and Six. So it wasn't none of this Conference Thirty Two, and you play. You played the absolute best teams in your conference. It wasn't no five Triple uh, A Four A um, state champions or nothing like that. It was just it was two ch champions in each in each um, division. You had a Division A, 1A, a Division 2A champ. You had a Division 2, double A, one, uh, 3 and 4 champ. And then you had the triple A, 5 and 6 champ. And we played a lot of triple A teams in regular, I mean, uh, six teams in regular season. The uh, uh, GWs and uh, Halifax. Halifax and stuff, you know. So we played some. And like you said, the Western District back there was stout. I mean, you had us, you had GW, you had Heritage, you had Halifax, you had Albemarle. And, you know, it always seemed like one team always got left out of that, whether it was Glass one year or it was GW one year. So I remember that. Take us back to that, that, that year, sophomore year, we played GW at the stadium. And GW was the horses, and, you know, they was predicting us to. Actually, I remember we were in our own paper. They had us predicted to lose, like, 21, I'm 28 or 7 or something like that, and we went out there and pulled us up, pulled it out. Talk to us a little bit about that week. Well, you know, it's, it was, it, Daniel and Heritage is always the weeks that, that I, I remember most, and I think you do too, but, you know, let's go back. We we not only played the teams you listed, yeah. Patrick Henry and, and Fleming. Oh, yeah. Right now, Fleming is down. Yeah. PH is, but K Springs, K Springs was one of the toughest teams. Oh, to be yeah. The, I don't know why. I was played on the third game. And I, I worried more about K Spring than I did anybody else because we always played sorry against K Spring for some reason. Yeah. But we won, but but we you go to Rump, you go to Pulaski, you still had top teams. And like you talked with 5A, everybody f for 20 years said, you know, 5A is better than 6 No doubt. It was. No question. It was. I mean, you talk about Bethel. You talk about Hampton, uh, Garfield. We go back up to Northern Virginia. Stonewall Hay Jackson. Stonewall Jackson. Yeah. 5A was better than 6A. Yep. For some reason. But uh, what was your original question here? Uh, oh, the Han the Danville. <laughs> I don't know. Is that the time? What was the That's game? That's that game we, we had. Um, they, they had Rafael Garcia for Garcia. Yep. Yeah. We yeah. had we had just we had won the ninth grade year there, and then we came back and they came to glass. They had the big uh, the Dailies and the uh, Brooks, and they were stacked up. They were stacked up that year, yeah. and we beat them. And that year they they didn't go to the playoffs because we was the only team because we had beat them that year. Well, we you know we had to play. We we didn't have any wild cards and was it, the the district champions went. Yeah. And, uh, no question about it. 
Eddie had the best, he had the most talent. And Garcia, but that was the time, what was it, three overtime? Yeah. And then Eddie tried to third overtime, he didn't kick. He went, he went for the two. Yeah, we stopped him, we stopped him. We, <laughs> we scored, it. We, we scored, threw a touchdown pass to Bulls Repair on the back yeah. of the end zone. We came back, stopped him on the goal line. I mean, and then, you know, we was off to the races. I, I think there. that, you know, I think that was one of that, that was that was one of the best games that, that I've coached in and also one of the best games that's been played at the stadium. Yeah. And you think about it, we when we would go to Danville, we'd fill up the stands. Yeah. They come here, they'd fill up the stands. It's not like that anymore. No. Halifax was the same way. We was gonna touch on that coach. But uh no, I asked Eddie later, I said, Why in the world did you did you try for <laughs> I got tired of I said, what would you have done? I said, gosh, his leg would fell off. I said, we'd still been kicking out <laughs> exactly. until, until 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then Garcia went ahead and had a great career at UVA. Yes, he did. Yes, he but, did. Uh, no, that was that was, that was was a big one. And, and uh, I still think about uh, stopping Fleming inside the five twice to win. And... Uh, the goal line defense and some of the guts that these kids showed and guts that the guys that you played with and you, you know Chris and Todd yeah. Long and that bunch it was just Marcus Banks it was it was just to watch you guys mature and, and decide hey we're not going to they, they're not going to win we're going to win no doubt and coach when first of all I got a bone to pick with you this is the bone I got to pick with you My, after I left now coach I know you let me play a little defensive situation. But I asked Spanky. I said, Spanky, you play a quarter. He said, man, I was a quarterback. I said, so coach let you play safety too. And he bust out laughing. I'm like, hold on. I said, so he let you play. He was like, yeah, he laughed. I was like, you know, I'm going to get coach when I, I said, because coach, coach would not let me play. He would let me play situation. Like I said, I remember we scrimmaged Jefferson Forest. I came up and made two nice hits. And I think the next time I seen, I saw defense was like four games. It was like in pre van or something like that. So, Coach, I had to pick with you on that one because you let Spanky play quarterback and you let him play safety and you wouldn't let me do it, but I still love you, though. All right. <laughs> All right. I got to – I mean, let me put this – put it this way. Okay. Does Tom Brady play defense? The, Tom Brady? No. no, he didn't. Well, Andre, Andre <laughs> Brady played defense. Right? Spanky, just, the reason Spanky <laughs> played defense next year – how many seniors did we lose? We didn't yeah. have the talent that we had your senior year, yeah. but uh, just I don't think that uh, Tom Brady plays defense, yeah. so I don't think I, I go for that, Coach. I take that. I take that. I go for that one. But yeah, and Coach, like um, a lot of times, what you see now in the day, like you was talking about, like you got the Hurts and Glass game, and you just got the Middle section, just it might be full. You might have a couple of people here and there, but coach, just talk about. We didn't even have to play heritage. We could play anybody back in those days, and the stands would be would be crowded. Um, what do you think it's going to take for us to get back to, you know, besides us winning? Because the, the, the kids have been winning, and the, the community is still kind of laxed in their support. So, what do you think really needs to happen for? us to get it back to how it used to be. Andre, that's, you know, you're, you're a very sharp young man. You're still a young man. Uh, you ask that question, your uh, your age group, my, you know, the friends I sit with that, that some of them played for class that are still living and everything. I don't know. I think, I don't know, I was not here. I was flying back on Saturday from Utah from, visiting my family and watching my grandson play football. And I hear it's two o'clock. Why would you why would you take football off out of Friday out of the Friday night lights? Yeah. Why wouldn't you let these guys play on Friday night? Because you know, not everybody in Lynchburg's a thug. Exactly. Exactly. You may have a few thugs. You may have a couple games, yeah. but that's what that's what the police force is for. That's that's the reason they. I mean, that's the reason we we play is for Friday night, Saturday night. Plus, we right now we've got we Liberty has one of the best teams in the country. Yeah, yeah. And the and Malik, the, the quarterback. I mean, we yeah, were first in, round. We were in competition with Liberty. Yeah. 
And why in the world we take it away from these guys? Plus, a lot of people don't want to sit in the stands and, and bake yeah. on an afternoon game. Little league football played a big role. Yep. When we, you know, we, you, when we got in the championships, we played afternoons because of cold weather. Yeah. You want to stay warm, but you don't want to freeze to death at night. I just, I don't know. I think the newspaper, we don't even have a sports director yeah. at Channel 13. Wow. Ben Cates is one, it does a great job. Mm -hmm. But at, when we were, when you were in school and I was coaching, we had four people in the newspaper covering yeah. sports. It was. And right now, we don't, you know, Dave Walls is doing all, everything he can, but he, he didn't come to Lynchburg as a sports director. I think right now, TV, radio has to promote it. The, the school system has to promote it, not put it down yeah. like they did. With yeah. that. I don't know who made that decision. Yeah. But yeah, we do. I'm not going to get in trouble over that. But, yeah. <laughs> but we, you know, we just we got to get we got to get back to where the kids take pride. They want to they want to be there on Friday night, and uh, we need to promote it. Yeah. I think, and and that's what we're trying to do with the jug bowl because I think. You know, people need a history lesson on how prestigious this game is yeah. and what it means to our community. And I think, you know, by them changing the game and the decision to change the game, and they said because they needed all this police, for extra police, I, I really think that, for lack of a better word, it's foolery. Just because of the fact that you're letting these folks that comes to the game and disrupt the game. You letting them win. You letting them dictate how we run our tradition. And the Jug Bowl is a Friday night game. You know, and you talk about the safety. I get the safety. But at the end of the day, I really didn't see that big of a difference in the police presence from last year. I mean, from year two years ago's Friday night game than from that that was out there today. So I'm kind of confused with that. And I think it's just a bad look. And I think it it put a black eye on the um, on the series just because you got fences up where you can't. I mean, it made you feel like a caged animal almost out there, and that's and that's ridiculous. Well, it, and if you change, like we were talking, if you change it on Sunday uh, from Friday night to Saturday, you're telling you're telling the public, no, it, it's unsafe. It, it, you're 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 in danger. Don't exactly. Come. I, that's just like, as far as the, the TVs, everything today, negative, criticism. I mean, everything is negative. That if, if it's bad, they promote it. I yeah. want to see the uh, news at six thirty. I want to see something good. I don't ever see anything good. It's some good things going on. It is. It really is. Country. I know we've got problems, but we don't need to continue to promote this and and and, and billboard it and everything else. Give it kids. I mean, they, they're not any different than we are, right? Than you were or anyone else. I think right now they need a push. They need leadership, and they need somebody to just to take pride and, and say, "Come on, and, and and let's do it together." Yeah, yeah. Let's don't separate. Yep. Let's get together and be one group, be one color. Yeah. Tell you one thing, so, uh, coaches recruiting, they call me, call Andre, Ruben, Todd, coach, and I've got chill bumps now. What color is he? I say, what do you say? What color is he? I said, I, I don't know. <laughs> I said, he could be green. What do you mean by well, we need to we need to know what color he is, oh, buddy. You don't need to come to my school. Exactly. So, you know, this has got to be. This, this doesn't need to be promoted. It needs to be shut down and say, hey, it's one color, it's one team, it's one community. Yeah. Until we get back to that, we're in trouble. You're exactly right, coach. And that's one thing about that's one thing about you, coach. You ain't playing no politics, man. You played the best players. You didn't care what color they was. You didn't even care what type of uh, 
economic background they came from. And you didn't care about nothing but them being good people and being football players that work and that can help, you know, not only win games but also help, you know, just win, you know, things for themselves in life. And you always – you know, so you never let anybody dictate to you the way you ran your program, coach. And that's to be commended because you think um, back then, I mean, we had just as many. I mean, it was more racial problems or just just probably about the same. But at the same time, it wasn't broadcast as much now. But I've never, ever, not one time on that football field when I was with you from the time I was in ninth grade all the way till I left, at I never, we never had any type of racial issues. We had never had any type of discrimination because I tell people, I tell people this too. Coach Henson then, then pulled me to the side and, and, and got on my back. I was in the basketball gym doing football season. Coach Henson like, get your ass out of this gym. It's football time. And then Mosby Perrault come in. Mosby, what the hell you doing here? Get that. So it wasn't about what color you was or your social status or your economic status. Coach treated you the same, Coach. And, you know, I know right now we got all this stuff is just being magnetized. And, and, and the good thing about it is that we still have people that we can kind of look back to and be like, well, you know, we never went through this with, with, with Coach. We never went through this on our football team. Racism has never been a problem on our football team. And even though I know it was racism in our school, Coach Henson, we were never around that. That was always guarded from him. He's the first person to stand up if anything went wrong or if any, he felt like any of his kids was wrong. He was going to stand up for him. It wasn't, we going to, okay, we're going to go ahead and suspend you off the team and find out what. No, Coach Henson wasn't going to let you go nowhere or, or no one was going to do anything to you until every, all the facts were straight. And for that, Coach, we commend you for that. So just talk to us a little bit about – and, you know, it may be a little touchy situation, but talk to us a little bit about, you know, the way you carry that with, with, with the um, administration by the way you protected us and made sure now. Not saying it, but if we did something wrong, then we're just going to get in trouble. But just talk to us a little bit about, you know, just the way you protected us from the, you know, the, the outside noise. Well, you know, it, I go back to Johnny Palmer and, and Leroy Cofield as far as assistant principals. And we've, we had... Uh, Great principles, uh, uh, good principles, but now with Johnny and Leroy, they were both, they former coaches, they were both strict disciplinarians, and they would tell me, they said, we're going to let you, if something screws up here, you one of your guys screw up, we're going to let you talk to them first, and then we're going. So I think that you guys knew that if you didn't follow, if you didn't listen to me, and if you didn't follow what I told you to do, then Johnny and Lee were going to step in and your you're butt's going home. Yeah. And then you got to deal with mom and dad. So I had a good relationship with the administration, no question about it. We had a good relationship with, with, with good people in the community yeah. that would say, okay, let me talk with Andre. Let me talk with, with Jesse Calvin, whomever it, it, may, it may be. But uh, just like the parents, you guys weren't really invited, but after every football game, a, a parent, I mean, we had, we had people, and I didn't do much with it. We had people almost bidding. We'd go to, to, to their parents, house that night, on Friday night for a full party. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it, 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 we'd go from, uh, we'd go after the game and, and, and socialize and, and we'd have a ton of people there. So I think it was a community affair that, that Paul Fitzgerald or whomever was going to help people out. Yeah. yeah. And just like your freshman said, I never will forget you. I mean, you your eyes look like you were bug-eyed and your mouth fell wide open. I pulled your butt off that, off that uh, and I told you that time. I said, when Tate Dow Gallagher broke his hand against Bethel, when it Bethel? It was, yep, Bethel. And yep. Bethel, and you, 
you were sitting over. I just pulled you up in freshman, right? Yeah, just pulled me up. Like I was on the team for three, with the varsity team for three weeks. Mosby Pearl Jr. Mosby was the second quarterback yeah. when Bobby Johnson and I talked. I said, Bobby, I want Andre to go. He said, I do too. So I pulled. Now Mosby Pearl played. His dad played for Glass. Played UVA, and he's a judge. Yeah. So you know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. anyway, I talked to Mosby. Well, Mosby looked at me and said. I don't want a quarterback. He said, I want to stay, I want to stay wide out and come in cornerback. I yeah. said, I just want to tell you, son, I think Andre's is ready to play. He said, I do too. He didn't want to play. <laughs> but to put you in as a freshman yeah. over a kid that, that tells me, go ahead, coach. I just want to stay at cornerback and I want to stay at yeah. that wide out. So it really didn't. I mean, I, I probably took chances I, I probably shouldn't have taken. Yeah. And uh, we've done some things that we probably shouldn't have done, but we're, we haven't gone to jail yet. Yeah. Thank God. I'm going to tell you what's crazy, Coach. That I'm going to tell you the whole time now. I remember getting pulled up. I remember one week I played ninth grade JV and varsity. Actually, it was against her. I played the ninth grade JV and the varsity game. Then I got a couple of little reps and, you know, some of the playoff games in garbage time. But – I don't know what it is, and, and it's like my dad. My dad is like a, a psychic or something, man. He sit there and told me. This is what he told me before that game. That night, I'll never forget it. I was living on Old Force Road in the Bramblewood, in the Bramblewood Apartments, and we was outside running around before the state championship game, and I was hanging out with some friends, and I think I might have been some girls over there. My dad was like, you know you got a game in the morning. Like, what you talking about? I got no game. <laughs> That's what he was like, you got a game in the morning. I said, like, Dad, I ain't getting in the game. He's like, you always be ready to play. He going to call your number tomorrow. I said, yeah, whatever. So we sitting on the sideline, This, you know, right before the half, and I'm sitting there, I'm cutting up with somebody. And I hear you, Andre. And I'm like, huh? What? Get in there. I'm like, get in where? They're like, you're in the game. You're in the game. So I can go in the game, and I'm just sitting there like, how did this just happen? And like my dad told me the same thing before the national championship game. He said, it's going to be your night. Be prepared to play. And you and him, that's all that went through my mind the whole night before. That next morning, I woke up so fresh. I was like, man, I'm going to have a good game today. And which I did go. We lost, but we went out there. But it's just little stories like that and things you look back on. And you just sit there and be like, man, somebody believed in you and gave you a chance. And. Like, that's what kick-started my career, you know, just getting that confidence through you. And like I said, you always, you put us in position to do the best things as far as whether it was on the field or it was off the field, Coach, and um, we forever grateful for that. And I know our time is kind of, we good on time and everything, so we, we're going to keep it going. So, Coach, let's just talk about life after football. For you, what do you enjoy doing? Well, uh, you know, right now, Helen and I are just, we've traveled a little bit. We've got, like I told you, I got a, we, I've got a daughter, grand, oldest daughter and her family that's, they've been in Utah for, I don't know why they picked Utah, but they love it. They've been in there for 20 some years, but we've, we, we travel a lot. I got a granddaughter who's, Gonna graduate this year, but she's one of the top tennis players in the Salt Lake Valley. Wow. And my grandson's just a freshman, and he made the the JV team. He's not playing ninth grade ball. He's a pretty good football player. So, and his high school is right now there. They're seven and zero. They play a little bit earlier because than we do because of the cold weather. But uh, we enjoy going out there. We we have our beach cottage at Harker's Island at Cape Lookout. Um, that's a little cottage, but we do get down there tw uh, probably eight weeks a year. And other than that, we just, with Jenny, my old youngest daughter in Richmond area, and we just try to, try to do what's right and uh, play a little golf, like I said, and I fish some, and uh, that's about it. I go to glass football games and go to church, that's about it. Yeah. And far as some of those coaches that you coach with and um, the coach under you, um, I know you got great relationships with them. Um, just talk to us a little bit about, you know, the relationships that you guys have been able to maintain and carry for over 30 or 40 years now. Well, it's just, you know, I think because of the camaraderie that we had when we first started out, 
the respect that we had for each other, uh, and hey, the faith that we had in each other. I would, you know, on Sunday morning, the offensive coach would go in one room and the defense, I, well, we would, we would break the film down. We'd break the film down, to, like I said, bless his heart, that Mike Berry had the film broke. He would break it down on Saturday. That's how dedicated he was. And, and Glenn and someone that saw him. But I, you know, they would go, they would go in, in different rooms and, and work on our game plan for that week. Mm -hmm. And then we'd come back probably two hours later and, and as a coach, as a unit, we'd put it all together. Yeah. So uh, that faith that we had in each other, respect we had in each other, what we did in the off season uh, is just, you know, and, and, and the families that we, you know, we keep up, well, I've kept up with all the families as far as their, their children and everything else. Uh, you know, we, we become a family too and, and take care of each other. You know, somebody's in the hospital, somebody's sick. Uh, then we're there, you know, we're there for support and we're there for, for just to support that, uh, each individual. Yes, sir. And Coach, I know now this question right here, you can answer it if you want. You can don't have to answer it or, you know, we can move on. But when it all ended, Coach, I know, it, it, you know, I ain't gonna lie, I cried. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you because I was like, what? I was so mad and I and there was just so much speculation and, you know, people making up stories and stuff like that that I just didn't want to hear it and I hated the people, the people for a while for it and, you know, just not knowing the whole situation but just the fact that, you know, my coach, the, the icon is not there no more. Just, I mean, if you will, coach, you can walk us through that a little bit and just, because I, like I said, you, it was a lot of people that was, like, devastated, and, I'm, I, and I was one of them, so, you know. Well, I think, you know, I'm, I, I've got to be very careful what I say. Absolutely. But um, I'll say a little bit. I think that the fact that E.C. Glad, after everything, my father, bless his heart, dead and gone, he was a great athlete. He's in the Hall of Fame and is a pitcher. He played, he was, he was a great football player. He just looked at me with tears in his eyes and this is the most, this is what I remember most, what in the hell did you do wrong? I said, Daddy, I, I don't know. I've never been told why I was let go. But the that. speculation is you were too popular. The kids came to you rather than going to the principal. I went to the superintendent during the season, pissed off at something, and he looked at me, he said, you are on TV more than I am. He says, if I go on TV, I have to pay for it. You on TV all night ago. I said, I looked at myself, I said, you're in trouble right now. And no, no, but all the teachers, just like you, I mean, they were, everybody was in disarray. They said, you were just, you had more, people paid more attention to you than they did. They were on the ego trip. It's just like, you're talking about money and everything. I, the principal told me after we won in 2006, I mean, I'm sorry, 1996, thank you now. You won it, you won a reason again. I said, yes, ma'am, we did. Well, not the 44 people, players are going to the two playoffs and stay in a hotel. That's what the state pays for. I said, no, you're wrong. Why am I wrong? I said, I'm going to take everybody. I'm taking 72 kids. And we're not paying the money. I said, I'm, the EC Glass football fund, Bo Henson, will pay for the rest of them. I want to see that money. I said, no, you can't see that money. That's my money. Well, they were, I had all the money. <laughs> yeah, no, we, yeah, football, I mean, we had it. We had it. So they, I think because they couldn't control everything that, that. We did, then they had to have a scapegoat. Oh, yeah. And what was the statement made by this principal? 
we're going, I'm going to put the East Street West football program in the right direction. Well, it went from penthouse to you know what. It fell fast. So that, that's the only thing. Nobody ever gave, and they even told the press, Dave Thorne, we don't have to tell you why we released him. I've never been told. The public's never been told. Yeah, yeah, Coach. That, man, like I said, that... that that that, that 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 does something to me now. Like I, I'm, cause a man of your stature, and for all you've done for not only the Glass community and the Glass school and just uh, countless kids, a man like you should be able to walk away on his own terms. You know, and, and again, that's the the curse of EC Glass. Like you know, I hate to say it, but you know that's the that's the I, and I and I, you know, I, I, I made it. I kind of compared it to the Michael Vick in, Vick in Atlanta situation. Like, I compared his situation to your situation. Like, Atlanta is never going to be good until they do right by Mike. Now, Mike made his mistakes or whatever, whatever, but to give back $21 million and they still do you the way that they do you, like, that's crazy to me. Just like for everything that you, like, EC Glass football was maintained. It was in a great direction. It was every year winning season. I mean, it was no outside anything where Coach Henson was doing something wrong. It was just the fact that the powers that be couldn't stand the fact that this man was who he was and he was you, who you were, and you were just legendary. And I get it. You know, I, I, I get it, the fact that, you know, as bad as I hate to say it, people just don't like to see stuff like that. And, and if, they not, if they don't feel like they're a part of it or they contributing to it, you know, sometimes, a lot of times, they like to tear it down. And what, what better way than to tear the head down? So, Coach, from me and thousands, thousands, I'm talking about other, we are definitely appreciative of everything you ever done for us, Coach, and for the things you're still doing. And, like, you've always been a part of my life, you've been a part of thousands of kids' life. Like I said, I don't know nobody. No one's ever said, not even in a jokingly fashion, no one has ever ever said anything negative about Coach Bo Henson. And that is to be commended for you to have not only black students, white students, Chinese, we had men, fam, Chinese too. We had all these people from every nationality. And, and even though you, obviously we see color, Coach, but you really didn't see it in a... See color like that. You treated everyone from the starting quarterback all the way down to the, the practice dummy. You treated them all with the same respect. They stayed in, the, stayed in the same nice hotels. They had the same nice uniforms. They ate the same great meals. And coach, like, you know what? We just, like I said, I want to give you your flowers while you were here. And I'm just so glad that you came on and had this time to talk with me. So coach, in closing, is anything that you want to say? Any you just take us out of here, man? Because this has been a fantastic interview and definitely appreciated. But we want to leave out on Coach Henson's notes. Well, Andre, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm sitting here with chills, and this was one of the greatest. This is one of the best interviews I've had or our sessions. And uh, you know, as as I've told you and everybody else said. The greatest move I ever made in my life was when Vince Bradford called me and offered me a job here and and I talked to my wife and we both said, let's go. And the friendships that I've had here, the moments that, that have been great, and some of the moments that, that have not been so great. Uh, and every student that I've taught, the girls, the guys, uh, football players, basketball players, I, you know, my, like I said, what do you miss the most? I miss you. I miss the thousands of young men and women that I've coached or taught. And uh, at 79 years old, I sit right here and I say, God bless me with, with a good city, with good friends, and especially with, with good young people. And I don't care where they came from, what their background is, they still a part of me and a part of my family. No doubt, Coach. Yeah, I love EC Glass, and I, the only thing I can say is go top of us. i tell you, Coach, we love you back, like I said, man. We definitely appreciate you, Coach. We're in studio with the legendary Coach 
Bo Henson. Coach Henson, thank you for your time. Thank you for everything you've done and what you mean to not only me, but the whole community. Um, what else is there to say? But uh, Coach Bo Henson, uh, the greatest coach that ever lived. Yep. And this has been Drake and Talk with Coach Bo Henson. Like, share, subscribe. Have a good day.